Yes. Okay. So um, I'll read out the objective. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So Emma is on level five, project two. I think speaking with humor, that is the pathway. And uh, she has to deliver the speech with humor. The purpose or the objective is to practice developing and presenting a long humorous speech. So the time is 18 to 20 minutes. Are you taking all that? I see, ma'am. Okay, okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have not checked. I don't know. I have prepared, no but it is less than that. Okay, okay. No uh, when should Do I we show? have a timer? Yeah, yeah, I'm the timer. Okay. okay. What time should I show the flags at 18, 19, and 20? Yeah, 18, 19, 20. Okay, yeah. Over to you, Seema. The clock strikes 5 a.m. My 80-year-old grandmother wakes me up. Oh, no. She shakes me off my lovely dream world. Get up now. Let's go for mass. Oh, oh. my exams have just got over yesterday. What's the hurry to go to church? I don't want to be a saint. This old lady will never leave me or allow me to live peacefully. I silently murmur in my sleep. No courage to speak loudly, you know. But when the second call is heard, this seven-year-old girl gets up from her bed obeys the military command. Tables turn. My 55-year-old mom wakes her granddaughter up for breakfast at 8 a.m. on a Sunday. And my dear daughter, with her half-closed eyes, shouts at me, Hey, Ma! I told you that I don't want to accompany you to this man's house. She simply pesters me. You simply pestered me. And now you see this old lady doesn't digest my peaceful sleep even on a Sunday. Yes. My dear Toastmasters, the world has changed. But is it for good? One evening, the clock strikes exact seven in the eve for evening prayer. I keep looking at the statue of Jesus, closing my eyes with my hands folded. But my mind is loitering around somewhere. You know, the next morning is the cooking without fire competition in school. And I'm about to break the Oreo biscuits into a glass to prepare the shell. Suddenly, a hammer hits on my head. Yes, my granny is against and looking at me. Seema, you are back to your dream world. The count is over. You are into the 12th, Hail Mary. Kneel down. And say one more extra decade after the rosary is over. I become sullen with praying and anger. No pause in serial of my favorite Shahrukh Khan. No watching anything after the rosary. This is how my dear Toastmasters, my grandmother, a school teacher tutored me. When I was just in my school. And today, I'm a staunch believer in the grace of God. Her last words, God has his own ways. Just have faith in him. They still keep ringing in my prayer ears. And I strongly believe in prayer. Next episode. Now I am in high school. My dad, a disciplinarian, is standing at the door, shouting in a loud voice, 
Get inside. Don't get wet in that rain. What are you about to do doing there? It's pouring buckets out. Yet, I, a dauntless girl, am standing with my brother with an umbrella in hand and a bucket in the other. Dear friends, if at all you are thinking that I am standing there to fill this bucket with the rainwater, you are mistaken. My neighbor uncle had assigned a big task before going abroad with this family for a month. Seema, please pour water to my rose plants every morning until I return. And I, like an obedient disciple, had followed his request. Yes, you are right. In that heavy downpour, I, with my umbrella, was diligently pouring water to the rose plants. And my brother was helping me out. This was my way of life. Simply follow whatever our elders say without giving a second thought. Be obedient because that was what was taught to me by my mother. This incident happened after second few board exams. I was flying like a free bird. But at home, my close friend and philosopher was my younger brother. He was scrawny and skinny but very strong. One elbowing was enough to make me scream my lungs out. This clearly meant that we had regular fights and I was obviously the loser. But I blindly trusted whatever he said. It was a school holiday and I got up late. As soon as I brushed my teeth, he called me and murmured something into my ears. I was so happy that I rushed out of the house to the gate to see the new scooty bought by my dad as a birthday gift for me. I took a round to the house searching for my scooty. Oh gosh, utterly disappointed. A big bulldozer was standing outside my gate. Then I realized that I was fooled on April 1st. Trust is easy to break but difficult to earn. Then on, I considered my brother's statements to be only wolf's cry. Now, transition in my life as a lecturer. First day, first show. Yet to begin. Seema, manage the class carefully. Be a boss in the class. The morning mantra of my mom, a school teacher to me, on that day. A beautiful sari is kept ready with thick border. She's turning round that single long piece of cloth round and round around my skeleton body. At least five big pins are injected into that beautiful sari so that even if I drew a triple jump, nothing will happen to my sari. It will be intact. But I could feel that cool breeze entering from every part of my body. Till then I was used to that beautiful kurta which used to cover my full body. And here it is almost half naked. Good heavens! I wanted to throw this once to my hanger and wear kurti top again and jump with my pants. On that day I clearly connected myself to that Sushmita Sen entering her classroom in Mehuna's movie. Sushmita, don't feel belittled by this comparison. When I reached college, I had to climb steps up to my department. 
looking at the way i was lifting the sari one of the lecturers who could make out that i was new to the college slowly came to me and said madam sulpa sari nu kelagi bidi maybe i was looking i as if i was walking in a muddy field as i entered the staff room i could see my hod seated there was my lecturer and i felt very comfortable he gave me the smallest class in the college he said seema you are going to first be a class with only 80 students remember to put on a big face and act like a stringent teacher be the boss in the class i just turn around to see whether my mom is also seated anywhere there to influence this hod but i went out went out gathering all the courage and uh, i could hear my heart beat very clearly i became the boss in the class on that day hey you there stand up but ma i just say stand up take your books and get out of the class no need of any justification just get lost first sentence in the class and i had full control over the 60 students and drop silence throughout the hour this happened in 1995 as per the instructions of my mom and my ho 10 years later when i was coming out of milagris church after getting settled here in mangalore i met the priest coming out of the church that morning he wished me madam how are you can you recognize me no father well you remember the first day you came to give lecture in first ba class at saint philomena college putto yes though i did not remember very clearly i said yes you remember you sent one boy out i am the same boy dad what are you doing now head master of milagris high school actually i did not speak that day it was the boy sitting next to me but before i could tell you anything you just asked me to get lost my dear toast masters you can imagine the rest so i decided to think critically evaluate analytically the behavior of every student just before them jumping into confusion we are teachers after all now there was a shift from mrs miss seema to mrs seema i had rarely entered the kitchen in my mother's house luckily i got such a kind life partner who initially praised everything that i did because now he has changed when i forgot to put salt to curry he ate as if his mother has never cooked it before i still have preserved the screenshot of the chapati frying scene in my brain once i had visited my aunt's house in bangalore and i had observed her chapati frying style two pans kept together on the stove and preparing frying two chapatis together within 10 minutes 50 chapatis get ready luckily my super mom had gifted me two tawas at the time of wedding exactly one month after my marriage i decided to prepare chapatis but my husband came directly to the kitchen that day switched off the gas without a word 
and stood next to me and started to help me. The reason was simple. Both the tawas were on high flame on the stove. Smoke had spread into the kitchen despite the exhaust on. And I, in the middle, was struggling to roll the first chapati that had almost the shape of Sri Lanka. Second chapati was not at all ready and here the stove was burning. Another lesson learnt but this time from my husband. Practice makes man perfect Sima. Practice, you will be the best here. COVID lockdown season. Hey, how can you be so heartless, Manuel? Not entering the kitchen at all. I'm struggling since 5.30 all alone here. I have online class exactly at 9 like you. Don't you think I need to prepare for the class? Oh, oh your English class is big deal. With the text kept open, so easy to teach, not like me. I have taxation class, you know. One of the toughest subjects which keeps on changing every year. Look at my book, how thick it is. I have to prepare. After all, you, Mr. Tauro, the egoist, I know how you are. My mother, my mother-in-law has rightly said, Tauros never have appreciation for, for toil of the ladies. She is 100% correct. They think they are the only ones in the world who are hardworking and brain. What about Sequeras then? This is how our early morning quarrel began in the kitchen. As a result, our faces were grumpy. This happened every morning mainly because we had too many things to do at a time, especially during that lockdown. And we were not prepared for anything. It was all of a sudden. So fights were common in all the houses, especially when the couples have same profession and both have to start the classes at the same time, one upstairs and one on the ground floor. The novels and dramas of Shakespeare that I've read in the past sometimes drive me to the world of fantasy. Romantic feelings come to my mind and convert my dear Manuel into Romeo many a times in my dreams. And I have some great expectations like, when I wear a new sari, I walk around him at least four times so that he notices some change in me. But this commerce head usually will be drowned in the calculation, especially of the opening rates of share market. Even if I try to grab his attention by keeping the front mirror open in the car and singing my old duet's favorites, impact of this is zero, like a null set on my quiet hubby. Now I don't expect any appreciation after 25 years of this, 24 years of wedding life. Just do what you like and please yourself is my new mantra. Thus, life moves on. Kabhi kushi, kabhi gam. I'm sure all present here have experienced one or the other scene that I have present to you, presented to you. Remember, yellara maneya dose tute. So laugh out loud and enjoy every bit of it as if you were to die tomorrow. Over to you, Toastmaster Lithium Anita. Yeah. Is it evaluation time now? or no, uh, we Let's continue, the with, the speeches. Speeches. We'll continue with the speeches. Continue with the speeches. 
Um, next will be Toastmaster Lalita and her uh, evaluator is Della. Am I audible? Yes, yes go ahead. Yes. Toastmaster Lalita is on her level two uh, speech, which is, I'm sorry. Just... Level one, project two. And uh, her speech is evaluation and feedback. So the purpose of this project is for the member to present a speech on any topic, receive feedback and apply the feedback to the second speech. The purpose of the speech is for the member to demonstrate that he or she has applied the feedback received from his or her first speech. And the speech title is A Camp That Made Me Stronger. Timer, please note the speech is for five to seven minutes. And this is Lalita's second speech. All the best, Lalita. Good morning. Good morning, Toastmasters. The title of my speech, A Camp That Made Me Stronger. One day, I decided to go for a place where I could get peace of mind and relaxation together. Yes, yoga camp at Mysuru drew my attention and immediately I made a sankalpa to attend the same. There were 32 participants, 50-50% females and males from different professions. Some doctors, some professors, IT professionals, teachers, CAs, and some were even artists too. Can you imagine a day without your mobile, laptop, TV, your wristwatch, and even without your tea and coffee? Yes, I spent not one day, but four days without all this, abstaining from all this. This is all about just to avoid all these things and live a life or live a day without all these things. On 28th of October morning, I reached my Suru Yoga Temple. Immediately after bath, yoga session started. Then another session, breakfast, lunch, dinner, etc. In the night, when we were thinking about the sleeping arrangement, we were shocked when all the ladies are told to sleep on a hall on the yoga mat itself. Next day morning, another surprise. When we were told to get up at four o'clock in the morning and be ready for the 5.20 a.m. yoga session. And that too, after taking cold water bath. This is the practice we followed another three days. The teachings and experienced and the learning from the camp are as follows. First of all, we have to forget our family, friends, relatives, office, everything. All connections from the outside world. It means we have to disconnect ourselves with the outer world. And now we have to focus on ourselves, our internal body. This is what known as unlearn and then relearn. In this camp, we were taught to come out from our comfort zone because now we are in small nuclear families and uh, we are living in a all comfort zone with all accessories at our home. But in this yoga camp, I saw people are very much focused and helpful by sharing and caring in any manner. They help everyone. We had a session on Ahara Shastra to enlighten on food habits, in which they taught us to avoid all junk food and take sadhvi food. You know why? Because jaisa an, vesa man. Whatever we eat, will think in that line. Our thinking and thought process will go like that. Jaisa an, vesa man. 
in this camp we had in the morning we had ragi liquid ragi ragi mundi fruits raw vegetables and instead of tea and coffee they serve as juices fresh juices made up of spinach mint and lemon etc and before every meal we have to make a prayer to god for thanking god for this food few sessions were like we have taken back to our childhood we have played we played indoor games outdoor games and with these games we uh, we uh, in these games we uh, taught the spirit of team building and strategy making to win a particular game one session was on adithi devo bhava means how to take care of our guest how to take care of all our atithis coming at our home one more session was on the yoga postures which we can't do at present due to the lack but we can do these postures with the help of others or with the help of yoga props now quickly i brief about the takeaways from this camp we observed we uh, focused on the proverb early to bed and early to rise makes all of us healthy wealthy and wise second we have to make sankalpa to do good things for ourselves for our body and for the entire society in this camp they taught while preparing food we should make the food with calm and peaceful mind and while cooking we can pray from god that this food will give good strength and energy to the all family members we have to set aside our ego by doing yoga and meditation we can become peaceful and calm if possible we have to put sticker on our we are putting sticker in our forehead instead if we put kumkum in our forehead this has a great impact because our ajna chakra is located here in our forehead if we put kumkum here then it will energize our ajna chakra if we follow all these things good habits then definitely we can enjoy we can live a healthy and peaceful life thank you over to you toastmaster delta Fiona will be moving on to the next speaker, right? Fiona. Yes, Della, you can proceed. No, I thought we were moving. Fiona, so yeah, Fiona, we lost her connection. Yeah. She says she'll be back. Yeah.